Who's speaking first? I am, Your Honor. Sergeant Horace Trimble, 9th Indiana Volunteers, appearing for the prosecution. And may I present to this court the Honorable Jared Hopkins, Esquire. 102nd New York Volunteers, appearing for the defense. It is my job to prove to these men who arrived here but yesterday that the men here on trial behave like savages, barbarians, and worse in this camp. While the rest of you are soldiers in the Federal Army who conducted and will conduct yourselves accordingly. Trust there'll be no more such outbursts. Mr. Hopkins, I beg your pardon. Please say what you have to say, sir. What could you have to say? I do not envy you men at all. Yesterday, you arrived in hell. I do not speak lightly. Andersonville is not just a place without food to eat or water to drink or a place to come in out of the rain from. It's not just a place where guards murder us for their sport. Hang them! Kill them all! It is a place without civilization. It is a place without law. Stop this farce now! Let's have some order. And you will hear how men, good union men, traitors, These men were driven by these circumstances, not of their own making, not of their own making to commit, understandably, to commit acts of desperation they never would otherwise have committed. We stood it. This is hogwash. Hang the bastard. That is the second reason I do not envy you men. You are being asked to sit in judgment on soldiers in your own federal army. We These men are victims as well, and their conduct must be understood as being caused by the rebels. The rebels, the rebels are the ones ought to be on trial before you. Not the men of your own army. We charge these men here with being thieves who stole from their fellows. 
Food, clothing, possessions of every kind. And more. Always brutally and without mercy, frequently in the cover of night. You will have all the witnesses to that you want. Is there anyone here who can say they did more? Who saw one of these? I exempt the six ringleaders. Who saw one of these commit or order another to commit murder? Killing fools just as bad as I killing them. If so, and he will swear to it, let him now come forward. Is there anyone here who saw one of these six commit murder? Yes! Or order another to commit murder of another federal soldier? To steal his goods? Or for any other reason? If so, and he will swear to it, let him come forward now. I swear. I swear. I swear. I swear. Corporal Day, take the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You can sit. Corporal Day, tell the jury what you've seen with your own eyes, Corporal. Yes, sir. I am. Um, before I do, sir, may I ask Sergeant Hopkins a question? Certainly. Sergeant Hopkins. Did I understand you to say that no law applies in here? You did indeed, Corporal. And that is the very point. There is no law here. There is starvation, roasting heat, freezing cold. There is disease, acts of barbarism and cruelty on all sides. But what law? Rebel law! We do not obey rebel law. The fact is, there is no law here for my clients to have broken. You shyster. Oh. There is law here. You are wise beyond your years. Josie, what are you doing? But that cannot be, sir. We live by laws. The here. law of survival, Corporal. We do not stop belonging to the Federal Army because we're here. That's right! We have our sergeants. We maintain order and discipline as best we can. 
Uh, we stand in line to get what little food they give us. We do not steal from each other. We do not betray each other to the rebels. I am we have saying that men can be excused if they do extreme things, necessary things, in order to stay alive in a place like this. What they did, they knew to be wrong. Every man knows to be wrong. They are against every man's law and understanding. None of the rest of us did those things. They did them to live, Corporal, to live. All oh, men want to live, Sergeant. But there are some things men won't do just to live. What things? That's what we must hear here. What has been done here? Murder was done here. Murder. <laughs> Dick Potter, but... Dick Potter and his father were the best fishermen in New Bedford, Massachusetts. He joined up the first summer of the war because he wanted to. Because he thought he ought to. He was a good soldier. and he was shot in both legs and captured at Antietam and brought here. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You can sit. What's your rank, soldier? Private. All right, Private, you tell us what you saw. I've seen each of these six men. They've murdered. They've robbed. Tell them what happened, Corporal. Sergeant, um, it was the first day that the 184th Do you swear to tell camp. the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir, I do. You can sit. You tell us what you saw, young man. Sir, I saw that man. That man That's called the one that right killed there. my brother Richard. And that little sailor down there cost me my leg the first week I was in there. And the fella in the green has killed a lot of men, a lot of men in here. They're all murderers, every one of them. Every one of them! We've heard enough! Those are guilty of thievery and low, cowardly assault on their fellows. Give them the ball and chain or make them run the dump. Every man who wishes gets a shot at them with his fists, sticks, anything you can get your hands on. These six. Hang him! Yeah. Yeah.